there's something that's pretty interesting about this day. Uh, there's a lot of satanic roots involved. I uh, explained about that in some other videos before. But you wouldn't believe what's also at the same day. For some of you who don't know, it's COP26, and that's basically a climate change conference, and they just chose Halloween as their starting point day. And you might say, why did they do that? Well, the thing is this, is that, uh, one, uh, you wouldn't believe how many nations are summoned to this. Out of all the conferences and meetings that the United Nations or the world ever had, this is one of the largest. So this is something that uh, all the nations and the world powers agree upon, is focusing on the world that they live in. Now, the reason why they would be so world-minded is because the Bible says, in whom the God of this world had blinded the minds of them. So that would make a lot of sense right there. So there's a lot of one world government ushering in this climate change conference, even a lot of religions, one world religion involved as well. Now, why would they pick this day? I don't know uh, what's going on in their minds. Maybe it's something diabolical. Maybe because uh, the elites have always worked through symbols and then through observances. That's why there's some hidden message in here. But even if all of that is not true, there is one thing that I believe in is that the one world government that they're ushering together, that's a satanic operation behind it. A, satan a satanic spirit is behind that. That's one that I agree with. Number two, that day Halloween has a satanic spirit behind it too. So why would two different things where Satan's spirit is behind it, he would collide it together? It, is there something more diabolical or satanic that the devil is working behind? Well, I'm going to show you that interesting thing. October 31st. Who knows, maybe uh, that could be the time where the tribulation could start and begin and we can rapture out because the Pope is the one who has a very heavy hand to usher this climate change conference for some of you who didn't know because Italy is the nation that's uh, mainly involved in this work. And then the Pope, he's been ushering uh, all the religions to agree and to help out with this project, with this meeting. So we know that the Antichrist, he is going to be some type of Pope figure. So with that in mind, this would be a perfect time that the tribulation can begin and that uh, the rapture could probably happen right before that day. Who knows? But with all this said and done, let's go one by one. Let me explain COP26 conference first. That way you can understand why there's a satanic spirit behind it, why there's a one world agenda behind it. And then after that, <coughs> I'm going to explain how Halloween and then the climate change conference, how all of that has to do with something together to usher in uh, the Antichrist kingdom. Okay, so uh, first of all, uh, there is undoubtedly a new world order behind uh, COP26, which they're going to have at Glasgow. And they're going to have that <coughs> climate change conference. Here are several <laughs> articles as an example. You get the participant of the elites. They're all involved over here. They're all involved. Let me give a few big names over here. One is from Reuters, title of their article, World's Top Three Christian Leaders in Climate Appeal Ahead of UN Summit. So we see right here <coughs> Pope Francis, Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby, and Orthodox Ecumenical Patriarch Bartholomew. So those are the big guys. Another one, a big name involved, you're going to be surprised, is that the Pope, he tried to do something where he combines it with Muslim participants. So this is from Daily News Egypt, title of uh, their article, Al Azhar's Grand Imam, Vatican Pope, Cooperate to Consolidate Fraternity. And they discuss a lot about uh, global, globalist scenarios, including climate change. So they're going to have this uh, conference. It's called the Summit, uh, their participation in the Summit of Religious Leaders on Climate Change. And it's called Faith and Science. Well, that's, that's a big laugh, all right? <laughs> Faith and Science. So... 
Uh, we see throughout the Bible science falsely so-called and God's going to laugh at them because he's going to point out to them there's nothing you can do to protect your environment, buddy. <coughs> Another thing over here about the elitist involved, Politico, title of their article, The Global Elites Are Headed to Scotland. Call it Climate FOMO. And then they have here Leonardo DiCaprio, Bill Gates, uh, Jeff Bezos are expected at the world biggest climate gathering known as COP26 in Glasgow, Scotland. So there's going to be big names, big celebrities and other government officials involved. So obviously Bill Gates is uh, joining uh, this conference. So because of that, the news did a, uh, the news did a clipping of him. In business, it's found on the YouTube channel Business Live. <clears throat> title of their article is COP26, Bill Gates on Clean Energy Funding Solutions. So they're all, so Bill Gates is one of the people that they like to start off and to launch with discussions about COP26. So we see a lot of uh, big boys involved over here. A lot of big boys, a lot of uh, elitists involved with this uh, climate change conference. So with all these people involved, then you're kind of wondering right here, wow, you got pretty much every uh, elitist that you can think of that's part of the New World Order system or some kind of globalist agenda, they're all there. <laughs> you get pretty much every name that you can think of over there. Another one from Reuters article title is Vatican Hopes, its pre-COP26 climate event will raise stakes in Glasgow. And then what they have over here, which is extremely interesting for some of you who didn't know, when the Pope, he uh, starts giving all these instructions and regulations. It's called Laudato, uh, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but Laudato C. So let me spell that one. When the Pope laid this out, and he was the one... Uh, gathering religious leaders for this uh, climate change conference. <laughs> but he laid out certain instructions and rules, which is very interesting. This is found on laudatoc.org, uh, Laudato title of their article, Laudato C Action Platform. They have a video that demonstrates it, but you wouldn't guess what the Pope says when he launches this, all right? When they start launching this, he said this, we are now going to begin a seven-year journey. <laughs> How about that? So, uh, you know in your Bible, the tribulation and uh, the standard interpretation that uh, eschatology scholars talk about is seven years. Now, that's huge. What if this is the beginning of the peace accords and the agreements or the covenant that the Antichrist launches? then this could be something big right here. This can be something really big. <clears throat> so uh, let's look at uh, some of the things over here. Another article from Vatican News, title of the article, Pope on COP26, sharing love respect should shape efforts for better future. And what he did is, it says here, Pope Francis is the one. That's the big name. Gather scientists, religious leaders, and experts in the Vatican for faith and science towards COP26 meeting, during which participants signed a joint appeal ahead of the upcoming UN COP26 climate conference. Wow. So one world religion ushering and one world government on climate change. You would think it would be something else that's a bigger issue or a bigger deal, but why climate change is the biggest gathering, one of the biggest gatherings in the world that ushers religions and nations, why is that? I'll tell you why, because there is a satanic spirit behind it, for some of you who didn't know. For some of you who didn't know, there is a satanic spirit behind it. Look at Daniel chapter 11. The scheme of the New World Order is this. All of it is so that government can have more control. That's why in the climate change conferences, what they demand is that the government should have more control uh, over the people's lives to make sure that more rules are in place, enforcement is in place, 
so that we can protect our environment. Now that's their excuse. Their excuse is because the private sectors aren't really doing that much of a good job or we're not doing that much of a good job. That's why we need more government control. But if you look at uh, several of the articles here, you can see that uh, when they give this kind of excuse, it's something scary. It's more than that. The Antichrist, when he sets up his new world order system, it must be what? It must be complete control, right? In your Bible, it has to be a socialist, communist setup. That is the Antichrist way of running his government. So when you get the whole world laying out this kind of regime set up, they laid place for the Antichrist to get that kind of power when he starts to take over the world. So that's the ultimate goal. That's the hidden agenda <coughs> behind this socialist communist, uh, communist control. Uh, for some of you who don't know, here's an example of that. Uh, this is from uh, the article from The Hill. Title of the article is The Sham of Green New Deal is its true intent, advancing socialism. Well, that's a no-brainer. Look at this one. To start, the cost of the deal is estimated to be enormous. A study conducted <coughs> by the American Action Forum put the potential bill to be an astounding 94.4 million? No. Billion? No. Trillion. Trillion. That's nuts. That's stupid, man. That's ultimately stupid. What about the thing where our, the, the economy is dying out? So this is what you're putting it. Over a 10-year stretch. Over a 10-year stretch. For perspective, that is over $600,000 per U.S. household. Next, the Green New Deal would dramatically change the way we travel by eliminating approximately 99% of automobiles on the road and air travel entirely. How are we supposed to accomplish this? By building high-speed trains and replacing nearly every car in the United States. Uh, this is interesting. One needs to look no further than California's bullet train to see how this would play out. Over budget and incomplete. So, <laughs> but uh, for some of you who uh, didn't know, Still, what is most shop shocking about the Green New Deal is a number of socialist wish list items that have nothing to do with climate change. The Green New Deal has you covered. It uh, promises economic security even for those unwilling to work. Didn't you know that? This is from CNBC, the liberal news media title of their article, uh, Cortez's Green New Deal offers economic security for those unwilling to work. See that? That's uh, the communist uh, messed up setup. Why? They want to be control of everything. They want to take charge of everything. That's their mindset. That's, uh, remember, that's what the Antichrist is going to do, like I told you before, right? In other video studies, I showed you that's what the Antichrist wants. He wants to be the one to deliver you the food, the needs, because he's the one that divides and uh, has the last say on what's best for everybody for equal equality's sake. Daniel 11, that's the Antichrist, right? Look at this. The Bible shows at verse 39, Thus shall he do in the most strongholds with the strange God, whom she, he shall acknowledge and increase with glory, and he shall cause them to rule over many and shall what? Divide the land for gain. Look at verse uh, 24, 24. He shall enter peaceably even upon the fattest places of the province. And he, <coughs> he shall do that which his fathers have not done, nor his father's fathers. He shall scatter among them the prey and spoil and riches. See that? It has to be that kind of government communist setup. That's why the Antichrist, he wants a 666 setup to keep track of everybody and to make sure no man buys or sells except what? He has the say-so. He has the green light. He has the power. This is all scary stuff over here. But not only that, uh, in the court's article, another thing this Green New Deal does is a universal basic income. How about that? See, all in one pot, a socialist control. But that's Revelation 13, one universal currency set up. 
It's going to be 666. That's what the Antichrist want, wants. Title of the court's article is, What's a Universal Basic Income Doing in Cortez's Green New Deal? <clears throat> so we see uh, right over here that the Antichrist, it's all a communist socialist setup. That's all what it is. It's not done for the good of the world. But if some of you uh, don't believe that, one, we have scripture, all right? But two, here's another example. Why is it, think about this. I always wondered about this. Why is this thing so important to the devil about climate change, climate change? There's tons of other topics you can cover. Why is this something that uh, the devil likes the most? I'll tell you why he likes that the most, okay? Why the elitists like this the most. The reason why is this, because... Uh, there's a hypocritical agenda behind it. The idea is, is that the common people, so commoners who are so blind and so stupid, they think that we need you guys to take care of us, and they're granting them more power, right? While these guys are doing more of the, the base stuff, right? The lowly stuff. You notice that? That's the same thing with climate change. Why? Because the, com the commoners are the ones who help improve the world. Why? Because Satan and his elites need a nice world to rule. That's the bottom line. So they need you commoners to set it up. Why? The world's dying out, especially when the tribulation starts. And Satan and his elitists, they want to... They want to rule this world forever. They don't want God to take it away. They don't want God to uh, kill off the Mother Earth. They want to keep their kingdom. So they want the, you suckers, you commoners, to take, care of their, uh, to take care of their world for them while they're the ones uh, ripping off the money and the control and the power and being hypocritical themselves to not take care of their own environment. Title of the article. This is evident throughout many articles. Because these rich elites, you don't dig up their own lives, huh? On how they take care of the environment? Oh, you never thought about that, did you? Why? You're a sucker, man. You're always trying to look at the, the problem with the common people, but you don't look at the rich and the powerful. But that's the rich and the powerful's idea is they brainwash you like, look at this, you know, we got to think about the common people. And you see that brainwashing? That kind of demonic brainwashing. They thought that they're up against the rich and powerful. It's those capitalists. But they don't realize that it's those same rich and powerful people that brainwash them through a socialist communist agenda and with a climate change agenda. Title of the article from Forbes is Leonardo DiCaprio's carbon footprint is much higher than he thinks. Why? Because this guy, uh, what he did for some of you who didn't know, is that... <clears throat> Uh, let me give you some uh, examples here. The article reads, The problem is that DiCaprio himself is one of those big polluters which diminishes his moral authority to lecture others on reducing their own carbon emissions. What did he say over here? He pointed out, For years his critics have noted his extensive usage of private jets. See, that's, they all argue, for some of you who don't know COP26, the carbon emission and all of that, it's coming from fuel. See, that's the idea. So that's why they want to replace this with solar power eventually. And then uh, there was recently uh, one of the RBB people that talked about in his own country, it's getting scary. They're taking away a lot of the fuel items and automobiles or industries, like taking it all away all of a sudden. Like it's coming at a rapid pace. Why? Because the job of... Uh, COP26 is because they have a big goal. For some of you who don't know, their goal is to reach a balance <clears throat> concerning about the carbon in the atmosphere by 2050. So in other words, they call it a net zero thing for carbon. Well, how are you going to get there is by this day, October 20, uh, 31st. That's the day they're going to make the decisive, strong action. And then by 2030, we're going to get a lot of it down. That's their goal. That's their goal. <clears throat> uh, this is found. You can read the articles over here, but this is from the COP26 website itself, ukcop26.org. 
And then they have a uh, full brochure over here about COP26 explained. And look at their goal, their agenda. And then it'll tell you everything over there. <clears throat> now another thing concerning about the hypocrisy of, uh, of these celebrities and these people, here's an article from news24.com, all right? So this is uh, a news source from South Africa. And the title of their article is Celebrity Climate Hypocrites. Do celebrities practice what they preach and are they really going green? And they did actually a very good job. They examined all these people. So you would think that uh, Elon Musk is the big guy who's helping us with solar power and energy. <clears throat> but they pointed out right here that uh, he still owns two patrol cars in his Ford Model T and 1967 Jaguar E-Type Roadster. He also uses his Gulfstream G650ER private jet <clears throat> to travel the world on business engagements, which uses an eye-watering 1,854 liters of fuel every hour, okay? And it gets worse. Mark Zuckerberg. Oh, yeah, the guy who's supposed to help all the liberal agenda, all right? Spent nearly $9 million on private jets and security, uh, he also has a r relatively modest car collection. His big purchase was a 1.4 million, I think you pronounce it Pagani? Huaria? Is that the name of that car brand? I don't know, car model. Oh, Max is not here. <laughs> Which only manages 13 MPG on a good day. Here's another one. Richard, uh, you get other hypocrites here. They give the details. Richard Branson with uh, his collective item. Oh, you wouldn't believe it. Bill Gates, too. Bill Gates. And he's worse than all the Mark Zuckerberg and Elon Musk, believe it or not. This is the hypocrite that touts about climate change and blah, blah, blah. Then you get James Cameron as well. Leonardo DiCaprio, who is worse than them, which is amazing. Farrell Williams. Harrison Ford. And they have a funny, they have a funny thing here. They have a, what they call a hypocrisy meter. <laughs> So that they could just go like this. Bill Gates is like over here near the red, and then Harrison Ford's like, eh, like mega red over here, which is funny. Then they have Schwarzenegger, Travolta, and then uh, so they point out all the big names here. What is all this? And not only that, celebrities themselves admit it. Title of the article from BBC News is Extinction Rebellion. <clears throat> Celebrity backers admit hypocrisy. They admit that. So what do they say here? You want to believe the message right here. Dear journalists who have called us hypocrites, you're right. We live high carbon lives, and the industries that we are part of have huge carbon footprints. Like you and everyone else, we are stuck in this fossil fuel economy. And without systemic change, our lifestyles will keep on causing climate and ecological harm. <clears throat> but the BBC news media reads... But they called on the media to focus on the more urgent story of life on earth. You know what that is? That's like a pastor who's preaching like, don't do fornication and adultery. God, uh, shame on you for homosexuality. And they start doing that. And then here goes CNN and these blasted, wicked liberal media saying, oh, look at that, They're, these preachers are hypocrites. They've been caught in these scandals. And these uh, preachers, they go out and say, you know, so you're right, I'm the one that was caught in a scandal, but still that doesn't justify blah, 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 blah. They, what would the news media think? They see that as hypocrisy. No, we should continue the homosexual lifestyle, they say. We should continue the fornication and adultery. That's the world today. They don't care about that. They don't care about the sacredness of marriage. And they make fun of preachers about that with their hypocrisy. Why can't I do that the same thing with these people? Oh, I know why. Because uh, you guys are biased. I'm not in your party. That's the reason why. Wicked demon possessed. You bunch of wicked demon possessed people falling for that kind of garbage. You know what God says about all this kind of stuff? Okay, I'll show you. Look at Revelation 8 and Luke 21. Revelation 8 and Luke 21. Now, it's so interesting how the Bible puts a number right here, all right? An exact number of the environment. 
<clears throat> now, you know what uh, COP26 mentioned in their article? They mentioned over here in their article, at two degrees of global warming, there would be, so this is based on Celsius, obviously, there would be widespread and severe impacts on people and nature. A third of the world's population would be regularly exposed to severe heat, leading to health problems and more heat-related death. You heard what they said? About a third. And you know what they said? They said that this could happen within probably the next 10 years, maybe. Well, guess what? In the tribulation, it's well underway. In the tribulation, a third of the environment gets affected. Man, this might be closer than you think going up. Rapturing with the Lord. Here's a look at Revelation chapter 8. Look at verse 7. The first angel sounded, and there followed hail and fire mingled with blood, and they were cast upon the earth. And the what? Third part of trees was burnt up, and all green grass was burnt up. There goes your environment. Look at another one. Look at verse 8. A third part of the sea became blood. Look at verse 9. Third part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died. And the third part of the ships were destroyed. Look at verse 10. Third part of rivers and fountains of waters affected. Look at verse 12. Even the universe itself, a third part of it. God is way ahead of that. And he wrote this in what? Before the climatologists and the scientists said, a third, a third. We come up with so many research and experience. God's like, oh, I was 2,000 years long ago ahead of you. I told you about that stuff. Now, here's another one. Look at Luke chapter 21, Luke 21. Now, the environmentalists, they all say, you know, if we don't do something about global warming, then the glaciers are all going to melt, and then there's going to be huge floods and... Hey, God's way ahead of you, buddy, buddy, bud. Look at Luke chapter 21. All right, look at Luke chapter 21. You know what God says? <clears throat> this is about the tribulation, right? At verse 25, Luke 21, 25. And there shall be signs in the sun and the moon and the stars and upon the earth distress of nations. That's the tribulation. But look at this. With perplexity, the seas, the sea and the waves, what? Roaring. How about that? God's way ahead of you. He pointed out that the waters are going to be overflowed. God's way ahead of you. All right, now look at Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. So uh, why don't I believe in uh, climate change or global warming and that kind of stuff? Simple. The reason why is this is that in the scriptures, the Bible says that all this natural catastrophe in the world, you still got a lot of green, a lot of water, and all of that. You still got a lot of that, and God's going to destroy it all, decimate it. So you can see right here that it's not, the world's not going to fall apart by itself. The Lord's going to ha have to do it. Why does God have to put his power on it if the world's going to do it by itself? See, so the Lord's going to intervene and do it. Not only that, God promised Noah, I'm never going to send you a worldwide water flood again. Now, he's going to send floods in the tribulation, but not something that's a huge universal worldwide flood. God made a promise on that. So that's why I don't believe in this bogus. Why? Because I believe in the Bible. It's that simple. All right, let's look at Ephesians 2. Now, let me explain something here, okay? <clears throat> why do I see something tied over here? when they put these two together, when they put uh, COP26 on Halloween. Why do I see this as something tied together? Why do I see that? Well, first thing is this. Wherever the <coughs> course of this world goes, listen up now. Wherever the course of this world goes, you got to realize Satan has a hand behind it. So wherever the course of this world goes, when they set up this conference... They set it up on this day. you got to realize there's a satanic spirit behind that. Do you have scripture? Yes, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2. Look who's behind it. Wherein in time past he walked according to the what? Course of this world. Who's controlling that? According to the what? Prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. See, it's Satan. So that's why I, I don't just dismiss this and 
feel like that I'm over-connecting the dots. No, I believe there is a satanic spirit behind it. But here's another reason. Go to Galatians. All right, This is a very good reason for you to think about. Go to the book of Galatians. Chapter 2. We're going to go to the book of Galatians. Galatians. And then we'll look at chapter 4. Uh, excuse me, I don't think it's 2. It's going to be chapter 4. Chapter 4. <clears throat> Now, do we agree that God has special days, right? All right, then. So, first basis here, the course of this world. That's why we believe there's something demonic behind it. Second thing is the days, all right? And I'm talking about special days, observance of days, all right? Now, think about this. Um, why are special days something significant about some spirit behind it. Well, it's obvious in the Bible. Let's look at the Holy Spirit, right? Let's look at God. So doesn't God have a special day? Yes. When God has a special day, did you ever notice it pictures an event? When God has a special day, listen up now, he has something where it pictures or foreshadows an event. And then a second thing is that it's so close, the timetable, to the event, too. That's two things you notice about God when he has a special day. One, it pictures an event. And that particular day is close to that actual event, too. Let me give an example. Uh, God, uh, he blessed the seventh day. There's no doubt about it. He did something special with the seventh day. We see that in Genesis chapter 2, right? And if you're a Bible believer, you know what it is. The seventh day is supposed to picture creation at rest. And it will be, uh, guess what? When you calculate God's day seven by seven sevens, by God's calendar, guess what you come to? You come to creation at rest, which is at the millennium. So that seventh day is a picture of creation at rest in the millennium, or creation at rest in general, but it's also close to the timetable of the millennium itself, if not directly is the millennium itself. Here's another example, Passover. Passover is supposed to be a special day where the lamb takes away the sin. And that pictures Jesus Christ as a lamb who takes away the sin of the world. Well, guess what? That's what it pictured, but it was also close to the timetable of what? When Jesus actually died as the lamb sacrifice. Here's a third example. A third example is the Feast of Tabernacles. For some of you who don't know, you can watch the video, When Exactly Was Jesus Born?, and type my name in there, and yeah, it's a very interesting study, trust me, you'll really enjoy it. Some of my members couldn't sleep at night after that. Okay, so <clears throat> if you watch that video, I told you that it's very, very likely from the scriptures that Feast of Tabernacles, which is a special day, pictured Jesus Christ as our tabernacle, being born in a booth or a manger, so to speak. And then I showed you how uh, the Feast of Tabernacles, that's what it is. It talks about the tabernacle and it talks about setting up booths. So when we look at Jesus' birthday, I showed you the timeline. The Feast of Tabernacles could have been on that same day Jesus was born too. So Feast of Tabernacle pictured Jesus' uh, birth and coming, God's coming, as well as um, it was close to the time, if not the exact time, of Jesus' birth. So here's the thing. If God does, has his special days and Satan loves to imitate God, why won't Satan do that too? He wants to imitate God. So then think about it. Wouldn't he have a special day that would picture an event that would actually occur and it can even, maybe even that special day would be close to the time of that actual event. What am I talking about right here? What am I talking about right here? Yeah, so Halloween, we know, think of the worst 
the most satanic special day you can ever think of. Halloween is the best candidate. Now, for the devil to time this where the, he has his new world order set up, it makes you wonder, will it picture something that the Antichrist will actually do to usher in the one world? And could it be at close to that timetable too when the Antichrist will usher in the one world? So how do we do this? Well, we have to look at the picture, obviously. That's what we've done with the seventh day, God's special days, Feast of Tabernacles, and the Passover as well. So let's do that as well uh, with Satan's special day. So I was very, very surprised over here, for some of you who didn't know about this, but if you type down, um, uh, first of all is this, one Halloween, I don't know if you knew this, what it pictured, so Halloween, what it pictured was death of nature. The, it comes from Samhain, which is the pagan Druids. Now, you know, for some of these people, there was human sacrifice or some satanic stuff involved. For some of you who didn't know about your Halloween origins. So, they picked that day, why? Because it was where the beginning of winter was coming in. And then they just did their harvest. So it was the timeline between the rise of nature and the death of nature. So then because it was a, in between that time, the, those Druids, those Satanists believed, yeah, I call them Satanists. I don't care if that's uh, incorrect. I believe they're Satanists. So then within these timelines of rise of nature and death of nature, they believed that within this terrain, there were worlds colliding and it caused a parallel or a drift where spirits would come out. And thus, that's where you get your idea about spirits or haunting stuff at Halloween. And that's what the Druids taught. And by the way, for some of you who still don't believe me on that one, all you have to do, which amazed me, was this. Even uh, when they did their climate change conference, why did they do that? Because of what? Nature's going to die. That's why they did that. And coincidentally, on the same special day where satanic druids thought of it as and the elements of the death of nature was involved in that. What spirit drove these guys to do that? And what spirit drove these druids to do that? See that? I believe there's a spirit behind all of this. But it's, what's even more evident is all you have to do is type down on Google Climate change and Halloween. When you do that, you be surprised it's filled. It's filled where so many people who are observing Halloween, they're integrating climate change with that one. If you don't believe me, you can do that right now, man. It's crazy. It's crazy. They're doing that. And they say, you want, to t you want me to tell you what's really scary? The world's going to die out and climate change is real. And see, that's what they did. They integrated with that. What spirit drove them to do that? Isn't that something weird right there? Let me tell you something even more, all right? Halloween, it's always associated with elements of nature worship. You're going to see something weird here. Some elements of nature worship involved in Halloween. So let me tell you some of the pagan practices that they did when Halloween would come around the corner. Uh, but before I do that, here's another title of the article. Cop t uh, from Daily Record in UK. Cop 26, Halloween and Bonfire Night will stretch Scots cops beyond the absolute limit. <laughs> so that's what they titled their article. So uh, they mentioned about Cop 26 climate and about Halloween, and they just integrated the two together that something big's going to happen. <laughs> so that's what this article did it. Now, I don't know... Uh, how much of that is true or not, but it is interesting if you research about COP26, what they're doing, and Halloween events at Glasgow, they're integrating all these things together. So something big might happen. I just don't know. Oh, by the way, uh, you know, here's another one. Is, uh, this is from uh, heatpower.com. Title of their article is, Where is all this CO2 coming from? And then uh, they mention about fuel and fossil fuels. But then there's an argument. What about the volcanoes? Isn't that really responsible for putting out carbon emission? 
And they said, yes, but it's much small compared to the fossil fuel. Well, guess what? God don't see it that way. You know why? He's going to blow up all these fires and volcanoes at the tribulation. And show you, here, I'll show you global warming. Look at all the trillions of dollars that you wasted on. That's what God thinks of humanity. See that? That's what God thinks about Satan's kingdom and operation of his minions. What? Building up his kingdom so the elites can grow fat. Daniel 11, they're fat. They live off of that. But let's look at uh, Galatians. I forgot these two verses, so let's go to Galatians 4. Notice Satan, his pagan demonic gods, have their observance of days. Galatians 4, 8. Howbeit then, when ye knew not God, ye did service unto them which by nature are what? No gods. Look at verse 10. Ye observe days and month and times and years. See, satanic... Satan does have observance of special days. But here's another one. Go to James 5. Here's something interesting. James 5. I believe that's the agenda of these globalists, is that they live off fat so that you suckers can do, build up the nice world for them while they don't have to. They can live nice. They can eat the delectable meats and everything. Remember, isn't that one of the goals? Like, meat is only a delicacy. And Well, look at all these globalists. They, got, they can eat delicate meals every day. See, they, they deceive the people. Commoners are so brainwashed. They got to think about, wait, what about you guys in my position? Not just us doing all the work. What about you guys? And you know what? I believe it because the Bible predicts it. That's what's going to happen. Look at this. The rich elitists, this passage talks about the tribulation. They take advantage of commoners to take care of their earth for them while they live off rich. Look at James 5. Notice... Uh, verse 1, go to now ye what? Rich men. Why is he punishing them? Verse 3 is last days, right? Tribulation. What happened? Verse 4, the Bible says, Behold, the hire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields, which is of you kept back by fraud. That has to happen. See that? Rich people at the tribulation have to do that. They have to do it by fraud. Make those uh, commoners, poor people, work for them. And the cries of them which have reaped are entered into the years of the Lord of Sabaoth. Notice right here that uh, they're working down the fields, that they're building up the world uh, for the rich men. You'll notice that, uh, let's see right here, at verse 5, ye have lived in pleasure on the what? Earth. See that? That's why they want a good earth. They want to live in pleasure. You guys are the suckers who got sucked up by this liberal brainwash agenda. You guys didn't see that, did you? Yeah, you're spending your uh, thousands of dollars to pay off loans, what you learned in college, and you're such a slave to learn that kind of garbage and to promote that garbage and help out these big, fat, rich elites. Shame on you. Shame on you. I'm a Berkeley alumni. I know what I'm talking about. All right. Now, how about this, man? I, I'm, I'm showing you stuff here. This is like really gold right here. Amen. Like this is something, a satanic agenda he don't want you to hear. Yeah. Let me show you now how Halloween is uh, connected with elements of nature worship. That's the next step now, okay? So let's come back to here. So, element, so Halloween pictures elements of nature worship, Okay. So there's no doubt about that. There's a, a website called themuseinthemirror.com where a certain person wrote an article, Samhain Celebrations, Nature Spiral Ritual. So going back to the Celtic Druids, Samhain, the pagan roots of Halloween. And they said that, you know, you can do something right here where you can follow Samhain. It's a celebrations, it's festivities. And one of the practices they have what here called Nature Walk. Nature Mandela Spiral rit uh, Ritual. And then they also have Bonfire Alchemy. And all of this is contemplating and reflecting on nature. And some of it is basically nature worship. Some of the people who practice this, you'll find out later on. So it's connecting with Mother Nature. It's like there's a worship or a reverence with it. If worship is not the accurate word, there's, uh, there's something where they want to connect to it. There's something they want to connect with nature. They revere it at least that much. Well, 
guess what? Let me show you some uh, stuff over here. This is not just the roots of Halloween. This is even with the climate change conference as well. They have some kind of reverence with nature that they tie it to something spiritual. That's Mother Gaia worship. What? That's basically, uh, Gaia is referring to Earth. So then, this is some kind of New Age teaching for some of you who didn't know that. And you wouldn't believe who's the guy that's really pushing this. Pope Francis. You didn't know that? You didn't know that. You didn't know that. Oh, I'm, oh, God help me. Oh, like that. You didn't know that, you poor Catholic, you. So, we notice right here, here's an ex example of uh, Mother Gaia worship from Pope Francis for some of you who didn't know about that. Uh, uh, here's the title of the article, and this is from Harvard University. They even wrote the article on this. The Pope, the Amazon, and Pachamama. And their title of the article here, the Pope, he had, uh, what he did was he talked a lot about Mother Earth. And then there were even Pachamama statues, actually, that were in the Roman area. And Pachamama statues, what that is, is it's referring to uh, Mother Earth, so to speak. And that's supposed to be an Amazon tribal gods or goddesses. But the Pope had that. And then guess what? He even apologized when there were Catholics who were frustrated, threw down the Pachamama statues. What a wicked messed up brain and then the these stupid harvard scholars and people they try to defend the pope you know because they were saying you know well you know we don't know if he really worshiped or not he wasn't really worshiping well then why is there a reverence or of something pagan with that one that's so messed up man why is there this harmony that you want to uh, meet up with not only that if you look at his laudato si he mentions a lot. You'll see elements of this Gaia worship or reverence behind it. So you'd be surprised. But you wouldn't believe who's the one who believes this too. You wouldn't believe it. A very famous evolutionist. And he predicted what science will go for. Scientists will soon go for. So you thought this was religious, right? The Pope. But it's going to be more secular than you think. It's going to be more so-called science now. Didn't you know that? So basically, that's the whole world then. They're going to have to follow this Gaia spirit. What, do, what does science have to do th with that? Well, one, Pope called it faith and what? Science with this climate change conference. That's one. Number two, the famous evolutionist Carl Sagan predicted this. And believe it or not, for some of you who didn't know this, this Mother Gaia uh, belief and spirituality behind it, scientists, I'm telling you scientists, evolutionists, they have a thing which they call the Gaia hypothesis. Didn't you know that? They have a thing called the Gaia hypothesis, that basically that we humanity will have a play in it where we can protect Mother Nature and then keep the spirit going, and that's how nature can thrive and survive, and then we have to become, uh, there's this, it's weird stuff, there seems to be indications of religion and oneness in here. So let me give an example. This is what he said, and I quote word for word, okay? Carl, the famous Carl Sagan said this, a religion, old or new, that stressed the magnificence of the universe as revealed by modern science, might be able to draw forth reserves of reverence and awe hardly tapped by the conventional face. Sooner or later, such a religion will emerge. Wow. Now you got the science side, talking antichrist language right here. So Carl Sagan predicted something like this would happen one day. This uh, Gaia hypothesis, it's actually been uh, promoted by uh, uh, a famous, uh, let's see right here, uh, the Gaia Hypothesis by James Lovelock, actually. James Lovelock was one, one of the people who really pushed and promoted this. So it's really scary stuff right there. Now, let me show you something, what the scriptures have to say. Go to Revelation 13. Now let me show you the scriptures, all right? Revelation 13. 
And then we're going to uh, go to, uh, we're not going to turn to these other passages for time's sake, but I'm going to, sh- uh, but you want to write these verses down. The verses that you want to write down is uh, Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, verse 20 through 23. Romans 8, 20 through 23. The other passage is uh, Revelation 12, Revelation 12. 15 through 17, 15 through 17, and then the last one is uh, Isaiah 55, 12. Isaiah 55, 12. Now, let me show you something really, really interesting, and I'll just say this is a possibility. If Satan really keeps pushing this liveliness and he wants somehow humanity and nature to have some sort of connection with each other to share a same satanic spirit, Is that possible in the tribulation? Let me show you the interesting wording of your King James Bible. It's so interesting how it's worded. Look at Revelation 13 and verse 4. And they worshiped the dragon which gave power unto the beast. And they worshiped the beast. So notice this is Satan worship, right? The ultimate goal of Satan is to have the whole world gathered together and to worship him. What does this have to do with nature and humanity in one accord? Look at this. This is weird what the Bible reads here. Look at verse 12, verse 12. And he exercised it, look at the wording here, all the power of the first beast before him and caused this. Who does he cause? The who? Earth, that's nature, and what? Them which dwell therein. That's weird wording. Why would your King James Bible say people who live on the earth, humanity, And the earth itself would what? Keep reading. To worship the first beast. Why would the Bible do that? Why would the Bible show that Satan worship is involved with humanity and nature combined into one? Unless you see some passages over here where Satan, and I told you some weird crazy stuff before, but it is very possible that uh, remember that satanic spirits, uh, if they can inhabit inside humans, couldn't they do the same thing with objects? Couldn't they do that with probably even nature itself? Couldn't they probably even do that? And then I told you some weird stuff going on where the sons of God kept intermingling with God knows what. And I mean like all of creation, which was really messed up. Maybe the devil's going to do that with nature and earth. Why? He wants all of God's creation to bow the knee to hell, bow the knee to Satan. Why? Because all of creation, the Bible talks about all of creation worshiping who? Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Aren't there plenty of verses on that one in the book of Psalms? Creation worships Jesus Christ. His creature humanity worships Jesus Christ. Satan wants all of that for himself, which is why, which is very interesting, Romans chapter 8, verse 20 through 23 shows all of creation groaning and in travail. Why? Because of sin. So when Satan controls all the earth, nature, through sin, what if nature and earth is in so much pain, they're waiting for what? They're waiting for their redeemer. That's what Romans 8 says. That's why... If you read Revelation 12, Satan tries to attack God's saints, but the Bible says the earth, nature, helped out God's saints and deflected the devil's attack. If you look at Isaiah 55, 12, when Jesus Christ comes down and sets up the millennium, the trees clap their hand in joy. How about that? And you thought that Narnia was a fantasy tale with these trees talking and stuff like that. And then, oh, the wicked witch, you know, we want to be free from her grass. Hey, all of that, the Bible's way ahead of you. That's something. But here's another one. Look at, uh, uh, there are three, look at Revelation 6. Revelation 6. I got to wrap things up over here. All right, Revelation chapter 6. Who said Bible study is boring, right? Who says Bible study is boring, man? Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention Carl Sagan's quote, so I better give the document his sort. His quote is at, uh, uh, his, he's the author, obviously. Title of the book is Pale Blue Dot, A Vision of the Human Future in Space, page 50. All right. Now, 
let me uh, give some interesting references here. Okay, so we see that Halloween pictures an event and it's close to the event. Well, we saw pictures undoubtedly, right? There's a lot of pictures here, right? Now we have to mention about an event now, all right? Let me blow up your mind here, okay? Let me, give you, let me blow up your mind here, all right? Now, this is obviously a very wild theory, but if we go by this rationale about how God puts his timetable of his coming, interestingly, on his special days, why don't the devil do that with his coming on special days? So basically, what if Halloween, October 31st, is that day, the Antichrist starts to do this one world worship with humanity and nature combined. Let's look at the scriptures here, okay? So it has to, uh, let's see some, uh, some pictures of the event. When, Satan, when God has his day, they show things that picture something. I'll tell you one thing. Halloween, you see a lot of pictures of this event, the coming of the Antichrist. Let me show you, all right? Here's an article from the Irish Post, okay? And then they, the title of their article uh, over here, let's see, uh, Sam Hain, Seven Facts About the Spooky Irish Festival Which Became Halloween. All right, let's look at several examples here. Some facts you didn't know about the origins of Halloween. It invented the word zombie. Why? Because they said one tale from Sam Hain tells of a dead man returning from the underworld to burn people to death after lulling them to sleep. But back before Christianity swept Ireland and did away with paganism, it was Sam Hain which promoted scare stories about the living dead first. So Halloween talks about the dead coming out with people burning up. Revelation 6, verse 8. And I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was what? Death, and hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and with hunger and with death and with the beasts of the earth. Oh, with nature in there too. Isn't that interesting? Wow. All right. Uh, let me sh Number two. Children were sacrificed. Children were sacrificed. According to the ancient book of invasions, each Samhain, the people of one Irish village, sacrificed two-thirds of their children, their corn and their milk, to the supernatural Fomorians. The text claimed that a firstborn child would be sacrificed at the stone idol of Crum Crouch every Samhain. They also say that Ireland's high king, along with three-quarters of his people, died while worshiping. That stone idol, their one Samhain, particular Samhain. There were humans sacrificed. Verse 9 of Revelation 6. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the what? Altar sacrifice. What? The souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood? on them that dwell on the earth. Humans were sacrificed for the Antichrist right there on the altar. That's why at Daniel chapter 9, what? What does he do with the sacrifices? Abomination that maketh desolate. Third, human heads may have been the original pumpkins. How about that? The pumpkins we carve today date back to a much older custom in which Irish people carved demonic faces into turnips to dispel evil spirits. But before turnips uh, and pumpkins became the popular canvas of choice, some say that Irish pagans used human heads instead. Some believe that Celtic warriors would behead their enemy and mount their heads by their villages to protect themselves from evil. How do the tribulation saints get sacrificed and killed by the Antichrist? Beheaded. And that's Revelation chapter 20, right? Yeah, I'll just give you the verse. We don't have time to go there. But Revelation chapter 20 and verse 4, it says the people who did not worship the beast, uh, that, that they were beheaded, beheaded for the witness of Jesus. 
All right, fact four. It invented the Halloween costume. That's where you get the idea of costumes on Halloween. Ancient Irish people wore costumes and masks to disguise themselves as harmful spirits, the very spirits they were hoping to avoid. The bones, skin, and fur of slaughtered livestock were used to create creepy outfits the like of we still see today. When they weren't using the carcasses of livestock to wear, the pagans created huge bonfires to cook their animals in their droves. So notice right here that animals were used for their costumes. Spooky stuff. Why? They're trying to picture the animals from the demonic realm. Revelation 6, 8. Who comes out of hell and with death and with the beasts of the earth? So when they dress up like animals, they do that to represent demonic spirits. Revelation 6, 8 shows possibly these beasts of the earth. They're connected to the demonic spiritual realm when hell comes out. Here's another one. It was stolen by Christianity. That's why you need a Catholic pope involved on Halloween in this climate change, this nature thing. Why? There's a cat. The Catholics were the ones who took it for themselves. Christianity, which they mean Catholicism, wherever it has spread throughout the world, has often assimilated and incorporated local customs into its mythology. Christianity incorporated Samhain's honoring of the dead into its own calendar with all saints on November 1st, followed by all souls on November 2nd. When large no so notice right here that this is supposed, because it's supposed to be a celebration of the dead, right? Halloween, Samhain. So when Christianity took it over, Halloween. So why? Because something holy. Hollow is supposed to mean holy. But notice Satan took something holy for evil. And the Catholics took it as reverence to dead saints instead of dead spirits, but dead saints. See, all of that, that that's witchcraft. Catholicism, that saint... Uh, that saint prayer and stuff, it's connected to witchcraft, whether, no matter how much they try to justify that. You might say, are there saints who die? Verse 9, Revelation 6, 9. Saints are the ones who die. How about that? Uh, six, it invented the trick or treat. The act of going from door to door in disguise was practiced as part of Samhain throughout Ireland, Scotland, Man, and Wales from at least the 1500s. In Ireland, the 19th century, it was tradition for a man covered in a white sheet and carrying a decorated horse skull to lead a group of youths blowing on cow horns from farm to farm. The concept of moving from place to, fla uh, place, to place, dressed as a demonic, being eventually evolved into the modern trick-or-treat in which revelers dress up and go from house to house in search of treats. That's what it was, is it was to get a treat from every house. And then uh, they would uh, follow a man covered in white sheet, carrying a decorated horse skull to lead a group of youths, blowing on cow horns from farm to farm. What's that? Why, that's uh, Revelation 13 and Matthew 24. Everyone has to leave their own house. Why? The Antichrist and his evil people are going to go house to house to gather up and hoard the people for themselves. How about that? And guess what? Those are going to be devils too. And devils will be leading these people. All right. A horse skull? Yeah. How about that? Seventh, pagans still celebrate Samhain today. So they still do that. Deathly songs, poems, and dances are perform performed before candles are left burning to guide the dead home. That's what it's tend for. It also praises the dead at a small shrine where a meal is placed down as a means of inviting the dead to dinner. How about that? Man, that's totally messed up over there. So all of this stuff, you can see that Halloween, what, it pictures what? A lot of elements that happen in the tribulation. Then... Could it also be Halloween would be close to the timeline of the tribulation then? Because that's how God works with his days if you study his special days. 
Isn't that interesting? So perhaps. And I close it with Revelation eleven eighteen. That We have to read this verse. You know, see, these people, they think that they're all saving the earth. But guess what? They don't. God's going to point out to them that actually, that in the end, it's these greedy Satanists who actually hoard the earth for themselves and then have the people be the ones working for them to, uh, to build up their nice little kingdom. But that very act of sin, you know why the earth dies out? Because of sin. And no matter how much technology or effort or advancement that they put, they kill the earth because of their sin. And God says in the end, they're not people who save the earth. They're actually people who destroy the earth. That's what God says. You don't believe it? Revelation 11, verse 18. And the nations were angry. Why? There's your one world government right there. United Nations. And thy wrath is come, and the time of the dead, that they should be judged. And that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants, the prophets, and to the saints, and them that fear thy name, small and great. And shouldest destroy who? Them which destroy the earth. See, these wicked people who sign in with the Antichrist, God looks at them and says, no, you're actually destroying the earth. You're not saving it. How about that? In the end, Scripture wins. All right, let's close with a word of prayer. God, my Father, I pray that uh, tonight's teachings have been eye-opening to the listeners and made us uh, see how Satan's spirit is moving behind the scenes. And we don't get caught up with that, but that rather that we be aware and focus on our duties in winning the loss now. Time is running out, Heavenly Father. And we've got to win a lot of lost souls to salvation, rescue them from this wicked world system, and give them the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.